I'm here with Professor Larry Summers, former head of Harvard University. Um, Professor Summers, what is the role that you believe uh, academia plays in shaping public opinion vis-a-vis -vis Israel? Ultimately, it's uh, thinking, it, what comes to be conventional wisdom, it's our understanding of history that drives a great, that drives a great deal. And so I believe what happens in universities makes a great difference for every public policy uh, question. And there's been a great debate about the crossing, the crossing of the line between academic freedom and freedom of speech and then hate speech. Where do you think that line can be drawn with regard to Israel in the classroom? Well, I think that uh, one needs uh, to be very careful to protect the principle of academic freedom and the ability to express any opinion. But I think it's enormously important to recognize that academic freedom does not include freedom from criticism. And that's why when there was speech and action by some members of our faculty uh, that I thought extraordinarily unwise, I suggested that uh, inadvertently they were giving, and not with intent, they were giving support uh, to anti-Semitism. And I think that the answer to wrong speech is not to try to avoid wrong speech, but it is more speech. And I think the great mistake that is often made on our campuses is to confuse academic freedom with uh, freedom from criticism and in the name of tolerance not to identify outrageous statements as outrageous. How difficult is it to draw a line on campus between anti-Semitism and criticism of Israel? I don't think, I think, I think obviously any, many any, equate the two. obviously any line involves uh, ambiguity. Uh, certainly uh, Israel should be thoughtfully and vigorously criticized. Even erroneous and harsh uh, criticism of Israel's policies does not constitute anti-Semitism. On the other hand, establishment of standards or recommendations of actions that single out Israel with respect to practices that uh, are surely taking place to a far greater extent in other parts of the world uh, does uh, raise questions. So there is no basis for using the term anti-Semitism with respect to those who believe that Israel violates human rights, for example, whatever the wisdom of that argument. For those to suggest that Israel's actions need to be regarded as a singular human rights uh, problem in today's world, that I think raises much more profound questions. What do you hope to gain from this conference? I hope to engage with uh, many old friends, to make new friends, to enhance my understanding on a range of global issues, and in particular, issues bearing on the Middle East. Thank you very much for Thank your time. You. Take care. Bye -bye. Pleasure.